Did you have a chance to look at the lead story? As the top of the hour closes in. 90 to show. Stephanie Miller settles in. Okay, we are 30 to your story, 30 to your story. Whether it's the 5 p.m. news or sports specials at Channel 12. Dario introduces both gentlemen. Drew Steph is the quarterback, the show's producer, the one calling the shots. Hey, Nick, we're about two and a half away. Making sure reporters, anchors, and the technical crew are all on the same page. Do you have times on Hillary? It's a fast-paced, high-stress job. She's been at it more than two decades. At work, if this is a 130 bike. Coming and in life, nothing stops her. I don't like to be told that I can't do anything. And I, if you're going to tell me that I can't do something, I'm going to want to do it 12 times over. She says that attitude and her perseverance have kept her going. Um, I was in a car accident when I was 17 in high school. You lost movement from, from chest where? down. And you were told at the time what? that I would never walk again. 30 years later, she's determined to get back some of what she lost. Whether it's a wiggle of a toe, a bending of the finger, um, any sensation, anything I get back at this point will be a blessing. That was Stephanie in June, right before she traded Lake Michigan for the Ohio River. The land of bourbon, baseball bats, and a boxing legend. The move? bring Stephanie to Louisville, Kentucky for one year. It's not a cure, but it certainly seems to be changing function, both motor and autonomic, sufficiently to really change quality of life. Stephanie is part of the big idea. Almost four months I've been down here. A research study at the University of Louisville, funded by the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. Dr. Susan Harkema is the principal investigator of the study. Epidural stimulation works by putting an electrode in the lower part of the spinal cord, where we know very important circuitry exists. And so what we're able to do is use electric fields to enable the spinal cord to work more like it did before the injury. 1.2. The device is surgically implanted in the back. Stephanie got hers in late July. 1.5. This happened the first day they activated it in August. The stimulator is helping to reawaken and fire up her muscles. My muscles are like, hey, what are you doing to us? And I think that's why how I get so tired too, because my muscles, even though I myself am not moving them, they're actually moving and doing things that they haven't done in 30 years. By mid-September, she was in a harness and on her feet. What was it like the first time you stood up? Oh my gosh, the first time, it was amazing. It was weird to be able to see eye to eye with people. It was weird to see out the window in full view. It was, I looked down on at my feet and I went, wow, I'm not a very tall person, but my feet looked like they were super far away. <laughs> um, it was amazing. It's in this clinic One, two, three. where Stephanie now goes to work. Deep breaths, relax your shoulders. We drop by in early October during her second week of training. Good, that looks good now. The research team is right there, constantly monitoring her. Keep the breathing pace. That was really good. From blood pressure to posture. It's all her. Really keep a nice, tall posture. You know, the shoulders are good position and not too tight, head is in a great alignment. And, and so, that's her own strength. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, especially for the for the upper part. On this day. And right now she's using about 60% of her body weight. Yes. She stood for a total of 30 minutes in three increments. Over several months, she'll have approximately 160 sessions. Good, okay. tall. The research team turns on the stimulator during each session. This is only for controlling. They use a tablet to control the amount of stimulation, which is specific to each person and task. Was that me or you? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> that wasn't you? No, that was me. Okay. During this session, a first. I was able to extend my right leg and squeeze it. I was also able to straighten my hip. And this is the first time that I, in since training started, that I was able to will my leg and my hip to go into extension. You were controlling it? That's, they were telling me I was doing the controlling. Um, so, so for the first time in 30 years? Yeah, I pretty much moved my leg and my hip in a standing position to hold myself up. A significant moment. But there's more work to be done. After standing, she heads across the room to the table. Core exercise, an important part of the program. All right, I gotta get the rhythm here. 
hours each day strengthening her muscles. This is my favorite one with her because she shows such a you know great control and you know activation of the abdominal muscles. Of the 36 people in this study, Stephanie has the second oldest injury. At this point, she doesn't know where it will lead, but she's hopeful. It looks good. I always call myself a guinea pig because that's basically what I am. Um, I'm a guinea pig that yes, who can help people hopefully down the road and hopefully maybe get a little bit out of it for myself as well.